Hello, folks. This is Steve A. Before you. Nothing in this episode is a promotion, nor is it a recommendation. I'm just going to have some fun. Now, I started to do this just a couple of minutes ago, and it looked like it was headed in a fun direction, so you're going to come along. Now, no, it's not going to be Slashdot.org. You know, I go there and look, news for nerds. America's offshore wind potential is huge, but untapped. What I did is I decided to look at the BBC, British Broadcasting Corporation. Now, I'm old. I'm old. When I was a kid, and I do mean 12 years old, and my father helped me convert an AM table radio to listen to shortwave. That's where I first found 40 meters. So, um, not sideband, it was AM, voice transmissions. I used to turn the radio on, especially on the weekends, and listen to the guys talking. You know how I have rag chewing videos? Listening to that kind of stuff starting when I was 11 or 12 years old. But I also was able to get some shortwave stations. And guess what? One of, one of them was CBC, Canadian Broadcast Corporation. But the big one was BBC, shortwave. And, you know, that time I spent in Israel, almost every day I would tune in the BBC. I think their relay station was on Cyprus. The VOA, Voice of America relay station, was on the island of Rhodes. So, I put in BBC, and actually, the first one I looked at was this one here. Did India let down the Maharajas? Did you know that when the British decided to get out of India, which became India... West Pakistan, East Pakistan. India's 562 princes occupied nearly half of its land mass and ruled over a third of its populations. So these are little fiefdoms, to use a European term. And they got them to surrender their local sovereignty to the greater purpose of India. By the way, if there were 562 princes all over India, what was the first agreed on language, official language of India? If you said Hindi, you're dead wrong. No, not Gujarati, not Punjabi, not any of them. English. Why? You see how the princes, they were, they lived in fairy tale palaces, amassed untold fortunes in diamonds and precious stones, maintained fleets of Rolls Royces and traveled blah, 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 blah. on the eve India of Indian independence of 47, India's 562 princes occupied, blah, 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 and they were, and I like the way the author of the shoes, they were, un, they were virtually untouchable. What a word to use in this article. So anyway, they managed to get them all to go for the greater good, right? And the article's about the guys that... So this is where I started, because it fit in with the fact that my first roommate in the dormitory in college, when I went to college, was from India. But I decided to go and look and see what was on the home page. I didn't read the whole article. I kind of knew about it. How did I know? My first roommate in college told me about it. All those Maharajas. Well, right away, now, now remember, 
back when I was listening to the BBC and even when I was in Israel in the 60s and 70s, you would go and listen to the BBC to get the most important world news. The latest happenings, not only in the UK, but worldwide. So I'm looking at this, and there's our, this article here. Now, here's what the BBC is today. Mr. Beast, how the world's biggest YouTuber, I thought that was PewDiePie. Oh, it used to be PewDiePie. Where's PewDiePie now? He's in Japan. He's kind of taking a little vacation. Mr. Beast, how the world's biggest YouTuber made his millions. Now, in a way, it's sort of like those Maharajas. Catch a little fight them and you're rich and nobody can touch you. If you don't know who Mr. Beast is, you're lying when you said you watch stuff on YouTube. So I clicked on it. Now, this guy's from North Carolina, down east, at least presently. So if you just go Mr. Beast, you can go to his YouTube channel. It's right there at the top. But, you know, you can go to the Wikipedia article. And his real name is James Stephen Donaldson, better known as Mr. Beast, is an American YouTuber and philanthropist. He's credited with pioneering a genre of YouTube videos that centers on expensive stunts and challenges. Correct. I'll give you a million dollars if you can keep your hand on this car for 72 hours, or you're the last one to take your hand off, something like that. With over 173 million subscribers as of August 4th, yeah, that is more than PewDiePie. He's the most subscribed individual user on the platform and the second most is, oh, second most. Who's the first? Why doesn't it say? Oh, wait a minute. Now, see, I'm going to wander. Why do, why do they do that? What's the matter with the people who do this stuff? So he grew up in Greenville, North Carolina. Okay. So you know who he is, right? Everybody knows who Mr. Beast is. And currently he's 25 years old. Okay? And as I'm scrolling down this and reading about the things, I noticed something that actually I, I think I heard, but it never really registered. It got down to the business model. And here it is, Mr. Beast Burger. Mr. Beast Burger. Hyde, a producer for the Mr. Beast channel, announced in November article, The Wake Weekly, that Donaldson would launch a virtual restaurant. Virtual restaurant. Now I'm thinking DoorDash. Called Mr. Beast Burger in December 2020. I'd said his team worked with virtual dining concepts. That must be a bright ideas team. Never heard of them. During the development of the restaurant concept, he said that Mr. Beast Burger will sell franchise rights to serve the burgers to restaurants across the U.S. and customers will be able to order burgers versus via online delivery services. And then Donaldson announced he'd bring a Mr. Beast Burger Shop to the American Dream Mall. Oh, so that's what that picture is. That's an actual physical Mr. Beast Burger restaurant, not a virtual one. I'm learning as I go.
in June 172023. We're just in the first week of August. Donaldson Express wishes to shut down Mr. Beastberger due to fears that quality cannot be guaranteed, saying he regrets signing a bad deal with virtual dining concepts LLC. But, so, you know, if I mention these names, I'm not promoting anything. I'm just reading it. You'll see why. But the company won't let me stop, though I'm a, though it's, I thought he was really, I thought he was so rich he could do anything he want, like a Maharaja. Maharaji. A Maharaji is the person. Maharaja is actually the little kingdom led by Maharaji. I didn't know this. This is the first time I'm reading it. In July 31st, that's like last week, Donaldson sued Virtual Dining Concepts and their partnership alleging the company damages his reputation by prioritizing the expansion of Mr. Rover food quality. He claimed he received no payment from the store. Okay. But let's see what's going to happen. And now we know that Mr. Beast, Donaldson, is trying to get out of this thing that uses his YouTube name. So I decided to do a search. Oh, there, there Mr. Beast Burger, the homepage. Those look pretty, those look like they're a big eat. You understand what I mean? They don't look skinny, like that one on the far left. That doesn't look, oh, but it's got French fries in it. But you can order now, right? Nashville hot chicken, I'm not promoting anything. This is actually kind of like the first time I'm looking at it. Cookies, fries. Visit the world's first Mr. Beast Burger restaurant. Oh, so this is the actual physical one. Download the Mr. Beast Burger mobile app. Okay. So let's have fun. Now, when I did this, it wanted a delivery address. And I said, I don't want to do that. But then it said, switch to pickup. And I thought, oh, that means I can actually go see where the food is actually prepared. Is it going to actually say Mr. Beast? It can't be. Now it says, Mr. Beast wants to know your location. And I'm just going to kill that. And you see how it changed? We couldn't locate you. Please enter your address. So I click on OK. Now, it starts with North Miami, Florida, and then jumps to Phoenix, Arizona, and then Franklin, Kentucky, and then Winnipeg, Met. So what I did was I clicked on North Carolina. And that didn't do anything. But then it said right here, enter an address or zip code. All right, Ashboro. My eyes really bothering me. Thomasville? Huh? You mean we don't have one in Ashboro? Somebody who says they'll deliver Mr. Beast delicious meals? Well, I've been to Thomasville. You get, you see 64 that's right out here? You just keep following 64 and you go to Lexington. And on the east side of Lexington before you, there's a fork in the road, and you take the one to the right, and you, you go past the community college there, and you keep, and then that's Thomasville. So then I, I did this. I wanted to see, like there's Yadkin College. Uh, there's Lexington right there. See, I told you, Lexington's right there. I know this is faint. Now, Randall Man is north of 
ash ball. Okay, that's Randall and Lake. So we'll do this again. Oh, oh, wait a minute. We'll do it again. Now we can see some places that you could go to. And these are Mr. Beast. So here's what I did, and this is the reason why I'm making the video, just for the fun of it. I clicked on that. And it says Thomasville, 1044 Randolph Street. We're in Randolph County. Now, I don't remember if Thomasville is still in Randolph County or if it's in the next county where Lexington is. You can order delivery or pick up here. Okay, that's how we got the address. So I did this and I said, show me what it looks like. And it's Ruby Tuesday. I don't know what Ruby Tuesday is. This is the first time I'm going to look. What's Ruby Tuesday? Restaurant company. Burgers, seafood, ribs, steaks. And here are locations. So it's east of Burlington, the west side of Greensboro. And oh, yeah, that, this, there it is. That would be the Thomasville one. And here's Ashboro. No, I don't want to drive that far. I don't know if they would deliver it to me. All right, so I just learned something. Okay. So let's do this again. Close that. And here's one over by Elon in Burlington. Let's click on that one. Burlington, 3110 Walton Boulevard. Let's see what it is. Red Robin. Never heard of it. What's Red Robin? That's not Ruby Tuesday. Family friendly burger restaurant. New, bigger. So, what could be wrong with the food from these places? Unless they're doing a different. Now, I'm not trying to promote anything. I'm, this is my first time. So, now we've got two different restaurants, right? Restaurant chains. You think we can get a Hardee's in here? I haven't tried. All right, let's try Greensboro. Oh, Friendly Center. I'll bet that's a restaurant. It's on Friendly Avenue. I go by Friendly Avenue when I go to Cone Medical for one of my doctors. Cone, Cone Health is the big conglomerate hospital in, this, in the Piedmont of North Carolina. There are other competitors, but I'm just talking about Greensboro. And, and I'll bet I, I'll bet I'll even recognize what this is, but I don't know what it is by just looking at this. But somehow it seems familiar. And it says, Mr. Beast Burger Delivery Menu Greensboro. But let's get a map. There's West Friendly. Uh -huh. Okay, so it's over in that end of, see, Cone Health is here, Wendover, Wendover Avenue is there, and Friendly starts here in downtown Greensboro. Oh, yeah, okay, and I've been out this way. So what we do is we click there, and we look around. Okay, so it's in the shopping plaza, and it says takeout right there. Let's see if we can get in. Oh, let me swing it around. I've been in this shopping plaza. P.F. Chang's. All right, that's not the one. 
So the point is that someplace in here called Friendly Center, Ben and Jerry's, okay, you get the idea, right? Lululemon, you got the idea? So now we have three different kinds of establishments. How about this one? Thorndike Road, it's Greensboro, Thorndike Road 7611. It says open at 11 a.m. So let's see where this is. Now, this one gives me, unlike the other one, oh, Friendly Center. Oh, oh, now I understand. That was the name of the plaza, Friendly Center. And I would have to know the store number in there in order to figure out which place it was. Now, I, I told you I've been, I told you the name sounded familiar. Now I understand. So this is a Ruby Tuesday, and it's a different looking restaurant, isn't it? So now we know that Ruby Tuesday is one of the contractors. We're just researching this. My mind wanders. I started with this, but I just wanted to see if I can make it make sense. All right, let's try Winston-Salem. Haynes Mall Circle. That's not going to help me. That's like Friendly Center. Friendly Center was on Friendly Avenue. Friendly Avenue is a main drag in Greensboro. So there was something. All right, I think this is, oh, there's Witsit. What's at Witsit? I've told you what's at Witsit. That's where the uh, Amazon trucks get next to the airport and get their stuff, and then they come down here and deliver it to my door, which is going to happen on Monday. 311 Waltham Boulevard in Burlington. And they're saying Mr. Beast Burger Waltham Met. Oh, no, wait a minute. I did it wrong. See, they switched me up to Massachusetts. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I did it wrong. I, did, I got the phone number. They should have been able to tell by the... Oh no, it's an eight seven. No, it's an eight hundred number. I can't. I can't kick the search engine on that one. All right, let's see what it is. Ruby Tuesday. Ah, oh, Red Robin. So we got two Ruby Tuesdays, two Red Robins. Somebody in Friendly Center could be one of them. So those are franchises in the metropolitan areas of North Carolina, and for my local thing, that's who it is. Those restaurants look to me like they would probably be okay. Why would there be any complaints? Now, what's this one? In Mebin. Now, that's a different kind of town than even Burlington. The dentist I used to go to, one of the assistants there was from Mebin. She was really nice. Let's look at what this is. It's a Ruby. It's a Ruby Tuesday. So we're building up some information about who's who's running the franchises in North Carolina, at least the Piedmont in North Carolina. All right, let's go to Durham. Duke University. But it says New Hope Commons extension. Huh? That isn't going to be very helpful. That's not going to tell us. Red Robin Gourmet Burger. Okay, so that pretty well sells it that the two chains in this part of the world is Ruby Tuesday and Red Robin. All right? Now, that doesn't mean that that's the way it would be in Wyoming. Now, I'm going to do something. I'm going to see if I can make a jump. I'm going to close this. I want to see if it'll update the map. 
want to see if there's any mo well this is kind of interesting isn't it let's try the a raleigh two seven six zero nine Yeah. Okay. So the map, the map was only gonna was only gonna show me the burgers within what would be our guess sort of delivery range, or I can drive to them. But what I did is I switched the post. See, like here's Olmsted State Park. There's Glenwood Avenue. Okay. So Raleigh, Glenwood. Avenue 4325 Glenwood Avenue Suite 5000. So we got to go into a shopping center. There's Lead Mine Road. I used to have a friend living on Met Lead Mine. Met Lead. There's Blue Ridge Road. There's Crabtree Tree. This, I used to live near this. So it's inside of the mall whatever Sweet 5000 is, inside of, now let me show you the mall. Let me show you the parking garage there. There's the mall back there. Here's the parking garage. You know, at one time they were expanding the parking garage and they built the upper deck and they put it on the pedestal things there. And then one end of it slipped off and crashed down to the ground during the night. Just want to prove to you that uh, I know what I'm talking about. Okay, let's go up uh, up here. Let's see what this one is. Lewisburg Road. Now, that's a really different kind of neighborhood, and that's also a main road going northeast out of Raleigh. And there's a lot of businesses and a lot of restaurants along that and car dealers and all that kind of stuff. And But again, it's going to be a mall because it says pound sign 110. This will be the last one. It's a shopping center, Lowe's Foods on Lewisburg Road. Yes, we're okay. Number 110. Let's get the map. So it says it's this one here. Oh, there we go. We got it. Very good. And this is, this is something that's in, that is, is in this area. So we found another franchise that's cooperating. And what's it called? Highway 55 Burgers. Highway 55 Burgers of Shakes of Fire. So what it is that we know is that the ones that are coming into it, if I go to Greensboro, there's a Highway 55. I know exactly where it is. I'm trying to think if I've actually bought from them. It may have been one time. Now, again, I'm not promoting anything. I'm not recommending. I'm... I'm, I let my mind wander. I found something interesting. I'll give you a little background that uh, into almost in, in nationally known burger train chain started here in North Carolina. It's not like we never heard of them and it's a foreign kind of idea. I'm talking about Hardee's. There's a little dispute in my mind as to where the first Hardee's was. They're lying about their, their fab. Their, they have a different story about what their beginning was. The locals showed me where it was. If I can search around and find it, I'll put it as an addendum, but don't count on it. I know I have pictures of it, but that was that was in the 1990s. So actually, to my mind, it's kind of a mystery because you see, this repeats what's in the Wikipedia article. The 25-year-old has branched out from video making and now has his own fast food chain. Well, he has he has the they let he he rented out his Mr. Beast Burger. It headlines this week when he sued the company behind the chain, claiming fans thought the food was revolting. So it jumps to another article 
which I didn't look at. And it mentions virtual dining concepts. So you can see that the so a headline like this comes up with new stuff and it's already in Wikipedia because they run. Do you think AI is updating Wikipedia now? As a result, Mr. Beastburger has been regarded as misleading, poor reflection of the Mr. Breach brand, Mr. Beast brand, the lawsuit claims, going on to say it has caused material irreparable harm to Mr. Beast brand and Mr. Beast's reputation. It also claims that Donaldson has not received a dime from the bar. You mean the genius who, who, who literally could give away a million dollars, I assume, from the YouTube revenues, could be snookered in a business deal? So we'll call this a developing story. Now remember, all I'm doing is reading what's online, with the exception of the stuff that I personally heard directly from people down in Grifton, North Carolina. About the, what the true beginnings of the Hardy restaurant chain is. That the first Hardy's restaurant was there and still is there, at least in the 1990s. Steve A.B. Foyal. Didn't even bother with Slash Dot today, but having fun, letting his mind wander and brainstorming this to make some sense out of it and understanding what the actual go. go I, I, I'm going to say it. I'm not going to be those those restaurant chains names. They are, they sell burger food. I can't understand what's going wrong. We felt we'll have to keep tabs on this and find out what the real story is. Steve A. before y'all, smile on his face, saying see you in 73.